K-I-L-R Killer game Hello gamers, simmers, and pilots. I am the Killer Gamer and welcome to my tour around the world featuring X-Plane 11. Well, 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 what, what do we got here? So, <laughs> if you remember from the previous episode, we had some problems with the Cessna. We landed it, but then it tilted and flipped over and now it's a mangled mess well we have a new plane now <clears throat> so <clears throat> let's go ahead and get to the plane now it is completely pitch black here cannot see a thing however thankfully there is a command for night vision goggles. And it's supposed to be control N and that don't work. <laughs> oh, it's shift N. There we go. So see, we can actually see now. That really helps. Okay, so where's our plane? That's not it, and neither is that one. It is that one right over there. Let's go ahead and head over to it. So here we go. This is the new plane. It is the Milviz T310. I think that's right. <clears throat> yes. Or, well, yeah, the Cessna T310R. And it's by Milviz. So there are. Um, I'll. I will say this much. It's a cool plane, but I think it's got some issues. One, I've, I've tested this thing out first, and so we'll, um, we'll kind of go over a few things. So number one, when it comes to the lights, oh, they light up. Uh, the, the, like the outside lights, they light up. But as far as illuminating the ground, forget it. You're not going to be able to see the ground at all. But they do light up in the front, and I'll show you that. <clears throat> Secondly, in the inside, I can see that there are cabin lights, and there's a, tw there's a twist knob next to it. It don't work. So, in other words, the cabin is completely pitch black. You can't see anything. Um, there's a button for cabin lights all you got controls like over over here on your your like your pilot door which there's which actually it doesn't open <laughs> but it don't work i mean you can't you can't push the button it's not even an option so it's completely pitch black the the cabin lights don't work and number 3 
the autopilot is garbage. Whenever you turn the autopilot on, it automatically starts turning you and like it, it just just turns you. It, it just completely turns you round and round and round. It doesn't it doesn't stop. The altitude part seems to work. Um, the vertical indicator or you know the the VS the the one where you change the the vertical doesn't seem to do anything. There's a couple of buttons on there where you know you click up or down as far as the altitude that don't work either. I can't remember if that if that worked on the Cessna or not, but um, I'm a bit disappointed. Um, for the price of this plane, the fact that there's those kind of issues, I mean, especially for flying at night, like flying during the day, you're not going to have a problem with the lighting aspect of it. Um, but the autopilot, this thing is not easy to control. I'll tell you that much. And the autopilot, the fact that you can't get the stupid thing to work to me is a game breaker it's a cool plane it's a very cool plane but man they need to fix some things on it or I'm doing something wrong I don't know if, if I am I don't know what it is but we're, we're gonna go inside here and uh, and I'll show you what I'm talking about Okay, so I don't think I can get up on that door. Did I just hit something? Okay. Okay, so you can't open the door from here. I don't think any of the uh, panels outside do anything. Yeah, those, those don't do anything. All right, we're gonna pretend that we opened up the door from the outside. <laughs> okay, so we're inside. Gonna go ahead and close the door. Now here are uh, some of the controls and then you got some controls down here. There's several things though, like you can't open the window. I mean, from what I know, you can do this on the Carinado planes. You can open open a window there. There's no door handle here. It looks... Well, see, I don't know if you can open... I don't know if this door would open. Why Why wouldn't the uh, pilot door open? I mean, maybe that's how it is on, on the actual um, plane. Now, these look like the cabin lights right here. They do not work. And I'll show you that. So we're going to turn this on. So here's the uh, control or the yoke. You can click on it to make it disappear, which is nice. Um, we're going to go ahead and turn this on. Oh, well, before I, before I do that... That's what it looks like. <laughs> it is completely pitch black. There is nothing. I mean, you can't you can't see anything. And I'll be honest with you, I have already recorded this flight and it was a complete utter disaster. I I managed I did manage to land the plane at our destination, uh but <sighs> I was not happy with how the video turned out, so. So I am redoing it. Um, I'm going to turn the night vision goggles back on. And I was trying a couple other things too. I was trying the plug-in for landing speed. And Really, Bixby? Here is what I found on the web. I, I don't want you to find stuff on the on the web. 
I, I want you to stop spying on me is what I want you to do. I have got to find a way to disable that thing. That thing is like disturbing. Uh, okay, so yes, I was trying the plug-in landing speed, which is not Bixby. <laughs> Just don't want it to turn on. And it puts it up uh, when you land, it just it puts it right here in the middle of the screen, and ah, oh, I hate that. I'm getting a message. It's nothing. Just, uh, and then I was also trying the reshade, and I don't know what's up with that, but whatever shade I try to use. I get this turquoise blue look. Doesn't matter what I select. With the exception of maybe a couple of things. Um, maybe only one thing. There's a night vision on that one. And that's nothing like this. This, this, or the night vision goggles on here you, it actually work. You can actually see stuff. So it just puts the, the green tinge and the, the noise on there. It doesn't actually allow you to see anything. So I got rid of that. It seemed to make the graphics smoother, but yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to be honest with you guys. All right. I, I, um, I'm not going to lie or anything, because the focus on this video, or, you know, the video series, just the focus on it is the travel and the adventure. I don't do, uh, like, specific reviews. I might do some reviews on stuff, but um, the reviews, for the most part, are part of the adventure series. We're just kind of integrating it all, and so we're reviewing the plane. Um, as, as a part of our um, adventure. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And we'll turn off the night gig vision goggles. Okay, so now you are seeing a little bit of light. Not much. I'm going to turn on the alternators. These are the magnetos. These two are for the left engine over here. And and the other ones are the for the right engine, which is somewhere over there. Okay. You have a push start button here. And I think you have to start this a certain way. Which I looked at the manual, as a matter of fact. Let's pull the manual up. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, here's the manual. <clears throat> so this is the... Oh, that's what T stands for. <laughs> it stands for the Turbo 310. Well, one thing is for sure, when you start up the engine, this thing will sound like a turbo, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, Milviz. Oh, okay, so they stand for Military Visualizations. Gotcha. Okay, so here is a welcome thing. Uh, designed for X-Plane, blah, blah, blah. And what you should have to run it. Oh, my goodness. I didn't realize it was 15. I don't remember it being 15 gigs. I don't remember it taking that long to install, to be honest. Maybe it did. Um, AMD... They recommend... Oh, recommend it. GeForce TX 1070 or better no, from from AMD or similar from AMD gotcha well I don't have a 1070 I've got like a 760 joystick yoke or other game controller a means of controlling the aircraft rudder either with twist joystick function or dedicated pedals 
Is additionally recommended? Yeah, I had to set my controller for the trim and the rudder. Internet connection. So you have to have an you you have to activate this product. You're given a serial number and you have to activate it. So you need the internet in order to do that. Now, when you go to it, like I'm gonna have to um, update. I'm working on an updated i7 or just a whole brand new i7. So once I get things installed on there, I don't know what's gonna happen when um, I try to activate it. Hopefully it'll still activate and not just say, oh, you, you, you're a new computer. That's not gonna work. I don't know. Okay, so you got this beginning installation, uh, files to copy, creating a destination folder, uh, copying aircraft, verify installation, and then this whole thing here as far as enter serial number, verify activation, reload aircraft, go fly! Then there's uninstalling, updating. They seriously need to update this thing. And product support. Uh, and I, here's another thing. I went to their, their forum. I could not find a place anywhere on there to register. So I could ask them questions. There's, I saw nothing on there to be able to register. I'll, let's bring up their support page too. You, you guys should know this, okay? I think I think that's important. And if Milviz is watching this video, probably not because I hardly get any viewers. But if Milviz is watching this video, um, you guys need better support. Just saying. Oh, pff, here it is, right here. To register for a specific support form, please contact. Oioisen at milvez.com for registration information and details. <clears throat> Please note that proof of purchase will be required. Okay, so that's probably just to keep trolls from getting on there. I get it. All right. So I will hold my judgment when it comes to support. <laughs> I'm gonna. I. I won't. I won't say anything. Or I, already, I, I was already a little disappointed, but, but okay. So there's something in there. I missed it. My bad. <clears throat> okay, so there is this um, turbocharge in the 310R. Um, this isn't really all that important, I don't think. And then just some other stuff. Altitude operation. Well, we should probably read this. The turbocharged aircraft is capable of climbing faster and higher than a normal uh, uh, aspirated aircraft can. As such, the pilot should be aware of the possibility of fuel vaporization being encountered. It is recommended that the auxiliary fuel boost pump switches be turned on when climbing to altitudes above 12,000 feet. In addition, the fuel pumps should be left on for several minutes after cruise and level flight has been established. Uh, the rest of this stuff, I don't know. I I don't really. <coughs> have anything about it. Okay, so there is a. A aircraft menu and I'll show you that. When it rains, this is the cool thing. It puts. Uh, water on your windshield. Okay, now it's talking about managing the fuel system. There's some fuel controls. If you just leave them alone, you're fine. <laughs> and you got a, a uh, fuel gauge. Oh, what is this? Temporary display the fuel quantity. Attempt to temper. Oh, to temporarily display the fuel quantity. Remaining in the main tanks, move the mouse over the upper portion of the switch. An up arrow will display. The indicator lamps to either side of the switch will illuminate when the pilot has selected... Okay, that's these things here. And then managing the electrical system. Warning of low system voltage is provided by warning lamps on the instrument. 
uh, independent alternator switches and separate and a separate master battery switch is provided as a means of checking for a malfunctioning alternator circuit and to permit that circuit to be turned off when the engine is not running the switch for that alternator should be turned off okay the master battery switch and the alternator switch are located upwards on and downwards off by clicking the switch with the left mouse button amperage voltage uh, indicator it's located on the instrument panel directly above the pedestal located between the landing gear controls and the wings flap switch huh I was kind of looking for that switch an amp meter select switch located to the left of the voltmeter left this right here has labeled indicate indications for left alt right alternator battery and volt by positioning the switch to left or right alternate or battery position the respective alternator or battery amperage can be monitored so this is a monitoring thing by positioning the switch to volt position the electrical system bus voltage can be monitored I don't really know why you'd want to do all this unless <clears throat> this has a realistic uh, thing to it like the batteries die or something an amp meter select switch located to the left of the voltmeter indicator has labeled instructions I just read that to position the switch move the mouse over the rotary switch movement to one side or the other will cause a clockwise or counterclockwise arrow to display click the left mouse button blah 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 when measuring the amperage blah 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 <laughs> okay tutorial starting the turbo 310 uh, the 310 our cabin is an easy place in which to find your way around unless it's night for a twin <laughs> the controls are well laid out and not overly complex this makes the T310R an ideal airplane both for those who desire relax and fight in an elegant aircraft or for those learning the ins and outs of, of flying a twin the instrumentation in, installed in the Milvis T310R panel is quite standard and should be familiar to the majority of simulation pilots equipped with dual yokes the T310R can be flown from either the pilots or the co-pilots position however the left hand yoke does feature additional controls for the autopilot the left hand yoke huh which the right yoke does not have. In addition, the majority of the traditional flight instruments are located on the left side, blah, blah. Um, uh, aside from specifications and limitations we've listed elsewhere within this user guide, our primary advice is simply to pay attention to the limitations indicated on the instrumentation, primarily the airspeed indicator, the manifold pressure gauge, and the RPM gauge. Have fun and keep the blue side up. All right, so these are your pre-flight actions. Adjust fuel quantities and weight as desired for flight. All right, this will be our checklist. You can't say I'm like way over here. Uh, might help if I fix that now. All right, it's not going to, oh, wait a minute. I just slide it over here. Okay. Um, adjustment or adjust fuel quantities. This is where we're at. Adjustments are made through the flight configuration UI. When selecting aircraft, press customize. Next, press to wait. All right, so let's go to the flight UI. So I'm going to click customize. Weight balance and fuel. And this has got different uh, libraries, so we'll we'll look at those. Okay, fuel tank. So you got fuel tank one, fuel tank three, here's two and four. So you got plenty of um, fuel here. This is weird. This is 109 and this is 99. Is this down or? Okay, well that's kind of interesting. So you could essentially 
Okay, this allows you to fly two hours and 13 minutes. Let's bring this thing all the way up. Okay, so if you... I wonder if you can... can change it between US and metric. So if you were to f uh, put, fill this thing completely with fuel, you will get five hours and 13 minutes of flight time. Which, on a regular Cessna, I think you can get pretty much the same. So this thing's a turbo, so I guess it, it eats fuel for breakfast. Uh, restore defaults. Okay, well, that's fine. We're not flying very far. Uh, failures. This is all standard stuff. Oh, I like how that moved. This is one of the libraries right here. I'm sorry. Meryl, I'm sorry. Talia's trying to sleep. I'm being too loud. I'm only recording a video. Yeah, yeah. Give you a pet. Okay, let's go ahead and turn. Oh, apply changes. It's ten fifty one <laughs> at night. Okay, so we know we shouldn't have these on. We just have the master switch on. Adjust as desire. Tanks 1 and 2, the main tip tanks, are filled before the auxiliary tanks. Well, that's not what we saw. <laughs> the, uh, the usable C.G range is from negative 15. All right, I don't know what all that is. All right. Let's let's go back to here. Let's do what it says. Okay, so one tanks one and two are the main tanks. So we'll fill those up. Take left the number three. These are reserve. Take two, bring it up. Take four, bring it down. Okay, that's what we're supposed to do. So we'll do that. Done. Did that just change my time? Hold on. Let's go back to that. Maybe it was 22 fit. All right, whatever. <laughs> you have a switch here for nav one and two. Uh, you have a switch here for nav 1 and 2 also. This is your DME. You can switch between nav 1 and 2. We'll take a... Yeah, let's take a look at this when we get over there. Um, Alright, alternator is on. Oh yeah, let's go back to... You can't see that. Okay, we need to remove the wheel chocks and covers. Okay, so I'm going to temporarily... Turn that off. And plugins. No, 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 no. Okay, here it is. Show hide options. So here's your options. All right, the T310R. So you've got these chocks, and then you have this, like, what is this? <laughs> it looks like a banner or something. Remove from flight. All right, let's. Yeah, let's go out. Okay, we're inside. I want to show you something. These you can turn off. If you take this, look what it does. It removes it. If you take take this, it removes it from here. Now, I think... I think you can replace this. What is that? The... I don't know. Some type of reality thing... You can cost extra, but I think you can replace this. Let's go back outside again.
Okay, so we're outside. Now if you look, you can see the chocks right there. And you also see these twisty things. I don't know if these are supposed to be tie-downs or what they are, but if you click this, it takes those off. And then you click this, and it removes your chocks. Now your live release, you can change here. So you can see them change. And let's go to here. And you can't even see a change there. <laughs> I when I was trying the li libraries, it uh, I was disappointed. I didn't think they were changing because I didn't see this change. This is the one I want anyway. But when I went outside, and I tried it, it works. I think that's the one. So you can see they work. Okay, so turn that off. Let's go back in the plane. Okay, so we're in. I'm going to leave this on because I want our open. <laughs> I'm going to leave the door on. Duh. I'm going to leave it open because I want to show you the lights. Okay, I'm trying to role play here. <laughs> All right, this is on. Let's turn this back up. And that was too far. All right, before starting the engine, set the parking brake. That's this thing right there. So here it is. This is the parking brake. This tiny little thing. Switch fuel selectors to main tanks. That's in between the seats. Left click on the desired placard area to turn the selectors. Okay. So we have to move ourselves over here. So you've got left main tank, left auxiliary tank, and left main, what is that? Left, okay, 50 gallons, zero. I, so I guess you turn it off here. You know, so these are pretty much set. <clears throat> turn on battery and alternator switches. The lower switch panel is located directly below the yoke. For easier access, remove it to hide the yoke. Well then see, this is kind of saying to turn on the alternator switches. Which I thought the other thing was telling us not to do that. Alright. Battery. Alternator. Alternator. It's like, eh. Whatever. Before starting engines, set lighting switches and dials as required. Toggle switches on off with the left mouse button. Rotate dials to adjust brightness with the mouse wheel. So let's do that. So here are all the buttons. Now I want to show you something. None of these buttons work. All this stuff doesn't work. That's kind of disappointing. I would like to see these things work. I mean, why is it whenever they make a plane, it's like there's buttons that don't work? Well, make them work. I mean, see, you could. Nothing works. Here are the cabin lights, right here. Lights, cabin, radio, full instrument. But you can see, it doesn't do anything. And what, is there not a button for cabin lights? Now you see, you've got this dial here, but you can click and drag and it doesn't do anything. 
you can use your mouse wheel, it don't do anything. I thought maybe that was a switch. No. But you can see if I turn off this, you see how it's not doing anything? It nothing. Nothing at all. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> set altimeter to correct barometric pressure or elevation. What is the elevation for Kankakee? Let's find out. Six twenty-five. Okay. Six twenty-five. Well, now this is nice. You get to see the little. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, you can obviously read it here, but this is kind of nice, I think. All right, so, whoa. Oh, no, no. Well, that's the closest we're going to get it. <laughs> okay, there's our heading indicator. <clears throat> I wonder if that's why we were turning the way we were going. I don't know. We'll find out when we start moving. That's nav 1, nav 2. Okay, we'll play with this when we get up in the air. <clears throat> maybe this is the problem I was having. So maybe I was doing something wrong with the... That's what I'm saying. And that's, you know, this is why I'm kind of go, going over the aircraft with you. This is a brand new aircraft. They recently uh, released this. Um, and you may be thinking, oh, wow, this is a cool aircraft. And then you buy it and you're like, what the heck, man? I can't control it. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to help you out with that. Okay, so let's turn on... I, and I, I, I wish they explained this stuff more. Like, anti-collision lights. Well, I never saw this actually do anything. Here, let's turn off this again. Okay, flight controls. So you can see, you can, you can, okay, that works, okay. Um, your radio. What, does the radio thing not do anything? Apparently not. Engine, instrument, and fuel select. I, I don't see, unless it's, unless it's down there, that's kind of dark. Okay, so that works. And then you've got... What the heck is this? SWPNL. Something panel. Okay, it's that. Alright, so now that you got all this stuff, you can... <clears throat> Is this okay? That turns it on and off. So I would suggest for night th stuff, have this stuff turned up, so that way you're not sitting here in the dark trying to find stuff. See, and that stuff doesn't light up. Okay, open left and right cow flaps. Hold the left mouse button, pull or push the control panels. And that is this down here. So it's like, oh, where's the cow flaps? I can't see them. Use your night vision goggles. <laughs> so here's your cow flaps. Hold the left mouse button, pull or push the control panels. So you can twist them. 
again I don't know what cow flaps do I just use them I just I, I just leave them alone all right so how do you know with your trim where it's centered you've got these dots okay when you move it you can see that that dot is going to move so if you're looking to whoops adjust it or know where it's centered it's right there your elevator trim the only thing I've been able to see you got a dot here and a dot there but I don't think that has anything to do with it there is this line right here if you move this okay, I'm gonna use my controller this line moves Do you see that how do you know it's centered I I don't know um, try to get a parallel with this um, screw <laughs> for, um, as far as cow flaps I don't know starting the engines okay left engine is started first then the right engine why is that I don't know turn on magneto switches turn switches on with the left mouse button so we'll go ahead and do that. Oh, they already were on. Okay. Start engine. Press the start button for desired engine. Click the button using the left mouse button. Engage the primer left or right depending on the engine. Click and hold the primer switch and drag to the left or right. All right, so we'll do that. Well, let's look at this first. Turn auxiliary fuel pump switch to low. Toggle the switch to low with the left mouse button. All right, so this is where all that stuff is. Here are the magneto switches. Here is the start button along with the primer. Over here is the auxiliary fuel pump switch to low. Well, we don't we didn't put any gas in that so I don't know why we'd want to do that set your throttle level to attain 800 to 1000 rpm so we'll look at that okay so here's your rpms cruise power nope this is your rpms so between 8 and 10, it's right over here. Fuel quantity, uh, manifold, just keep it in the green. Oil, pressure, uh, yeah, that's your left, your right. Like, again, keep it in the green. <laughs> um, I guess this is total fuel altogether. Oh, no, no, no. Here. There's a switch here. Switch. There you go. You have to hold the button. Okay, so we got nothing in the auxiliary tank. Um, these all adjust. Oh, this is our clock right here. So it's 1110. Um, these don't do anything. EGT. I don't know what that is. Door seal activate. Okay. It makes noise. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start the engine. That's on. Okay, so let's see if the prime prime primer does anything. Doesn't do anything. This is your mix. How do I know? Mixture. RPM, increase, decrease. 
I don't even know what. I guess you increase or decrease your. What's the difference between this and your throttle? I don't know. Uh, so mixture. You need to turn it. Oh, there's the flaps. I wonder where those were. Okay. And these don't work either. See, you can't can't do anything with them. Why why can't you act why can't you make these things work? Okay, now start it again. Oh for crying out loud. Okay, let's bring the throttle up a little bit. Well that seems to do something. Click our primer. What was that right here? I guess that's good. We we'll start the other engine. All right, prime it. <laughs> Holy heck, man! You see, this thing is not easy to try to start. Turn the fuel pumps on. Oh, it says to put them on low. Let's turn this up a little bit then. Let's turn the RPMs up. I think I had originally moved these all the way up. There. Let's start the other one. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Come on. Are you serious? I didn't have this problem the last time I... It's the last time I was doing this. Oh, for crying out loud. There we go. Ah, oh, move, move, move. All right. You can see it's on. That's how you start it. Before taxi, turn on your avionics switch, which is over here. Turn on and set avion avionics as desired, release the parking brake. Then you got specifications, recommended speeds. Who reads this stuff? <laughs> That's no fun. Alright, maneuvering speed 148. Uh, flaps. Uh, here, maximum cruising speed 181. And you got all this stuff here. And then credits. And that's it. Let's talk about where we're going. Since I have this up. We're here at Greater Kankakee. Man, can you even hear me? Hold on. I think that is a little better. Of course, if you love it being loud, you do that. <laughs> but no, we won't do that, so that way we can hear each other. And I'm going to move this right there. Okay. So, yeah, we're at Greater Kankakee, and we're going to be going here to Bloomington Mormon. I couldn't figure out why it was called Bloomington Normal until I started researching it, which is going to be for our documentary afterwards. And 
Uh, basically, there's a city called Bloomington and a city called Normal, and they just call it Bloomington Normal. I guess both are important. <laughs> that's why it's in. That's why it's hyphenated. That's why you know, like some people's names are hyphenated. All right. That's enough of that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn these off. You turn them off with your magnets, just shut them off. Because what I want to do is I want to show you the lights. All right. So anti-collusion lights. Collision, not collusion. What do those do? Well, let's go outside and let's find out. Okay, we're, we're looking at the plane. So this must be the collision lights right here. Go back inside. Nav lights. Turn those on. I see a light over here. I think that's the plane. Move over to the side. All right, I don't see anything there. Okay, and then we have your strobe light. Okay, yeah, there's your flashing lights there. Come back down here. De-ice light. I have no idea. I've checked that. I don't I don't see any lights. Prop de ice windshield. I don't know if these actually do anything as far as de-icing it. I guess we need to be in a real cold place to find out. Alright. So here are your taxi lights. We'll turn those on. <clears throat> Head back outside. That's your taxi light. Okay, it doesn't really illuminate anything. Um, it's probably not meant to. Finally, landing lights. Oh, okay. This is a little tricky. These are not just simple buttons. If you look, there is a up and down arrow. That's because it has like two settings. Well, the first setting didn't do anything, so I don't even know why it's there. If it was brightness, I guess that would be another thing. So we have to click it up twice. There's our landing lights. That is as bright as it gets. And you see, it's not illuminating anything on the ground. Maybe that's how the actual plane is, but that just makes no sense. Shouldn't you have lights that illuminate the ground so you can see it? I mean, this is unacceptable, in my opinion. 
They, I mean, the landing lights, I think, are just to show, yeah, there's someone landing. But, so the taxi light should be able to light something up. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything. And, you know, not even from a distance, you know, depending upon where that's shining. It just doesn't do anything. I don't see how that's helpful. Okay. <clears throat> so we're back in here again. There really is nothing else. So, back up. We'll start our engines. Okay, they are set. Avionics Master. My delivery would be 434, ready for IFR. Would be 434, clear to your departure. West two vectors as filed. Maintain 4000 on departure. Departure oh. frequency 121.0. Clock okay. 2012. Is that going to be too loud? Vectors west two vectors as filed. I want to make sure that you guys can hear it, too. Now let's turn, turn it down a little bit. So we're set here. Let's, let's get our GPS flight director thing going. Okay, that's from the approach the last time. Uh, let's see. Cursor, it's highlighted, clear, let's clear this out. Okay. We don't want Juliet. That. Alright, yay! So uh, Bloomington, it's it's also called the Central Illinois Regional Airport. It used to be called Bloomington. Normal regional, I guess. <clears throat> All right, so it's going to be K B N R. And Clarence, Delta twelve seventy. Delta twelve seventy, Clarence. Yes, we have. I got us on the halo yeah. today. Do you know if that's going to be north or south departure from the side of the airport? Southwest coming to inspect the department right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. We're all set. <clears throat> now we need to go ahead and set our radio. We'll go ahead and open up our flight plan. This is 122.10. And I don't want to zoom. Oops. Come on, Pro Flight Emulator. Right now. Hey, Radio that one three. Uh, trout, you please open my IFR flight plan at that time. Just the one three box trot. Roger. Uh, we'll open your no, flight no, plan at no, two five. One three. Uh, trout. Roger. Thank, thank you. Uh, yeah. But you can put it on our chart. I can't find it anymore. Uh, Here's our cheat sheet uh, right here. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we got request to open, close, extend ETA, request WXR advisories. Let's go ahead and do that. Flight watch, Cessna, 1, 3, Arctra, on the ground at Hilo, India, Hilo, Hilo, request in route weather advisories. Tesla 1 3 box spot. Weather at Hilo, India. Hilo, Hilo reported at broke clouds with top 1 4000. Measured ceiling at 1 0, Winds from 2 1 6, R 0 1 5 at 5. Winds from 2 R 0 0 5 at 5. Altimeter is 2 9 9 2. 
One, three. Arch, roger. roger, thank you. Okay. Now let's go ahead and request field advisories. Radio test one three Arch, on, on the ground at two three two six local IFR request no, field advisory. Cessna one three hotspot contact uh, Unicom for advisory uh, on one two three point zero. One three Arch, Roger, Roger, thank you. And this is all Hilo, India, Hilo, 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 Mike, India, traffic test, one, three, arch truck, on the ground, at two, three, two, six, local, high up, request field advisory. Test, one, three, box truck, wind, zero, three, five, at six, altimeter is two, nine, or nine, or two. One, three, arch truck, roger, thank you. Okay, here's the rest of our stuff. Um, taking the runway, defining the area. VCP is virtual co-pilot mode. That's on, so it's less of a less of a problem because it will automatically change stuff. Now, look ahead. How in the world you can see the runway, but how in the world do you know you're on the taxiway? At Kankakee, there are no taxi lights at all. That's not helpful. Is it like that in real life? I don't know. <laughs> um, I believe I want to take runway 36, if we can find it. So we got our night vision goggles on. I right, close the door. So this doesn't really help as far as the taxiway either. Okay, it looks like our RPM is exactly where it needs to be. But I am going to turn that down anyway. Now it doesn't turn it off. It sounds like it does, but it doesn't. a little bit. Parking brake off. Let's turn. I like the sound, the sound is cool. <laughs> now, do you see the taxiway? I sure don't. Maybe what we can do is do this, do this. Is there a map? What does this do? <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> There's not a, a map? Clear, never 3323. Never 3323, I've been trying to call you. Out of here. I got the clear on this radio. Looking for uh, clearance negative PDT. Alright, never 3323, you're cleared to Oscar. Alpha Juliet. Gary 2 departure, call your transition at 5. I'm maintaining 1 0 10,000. Expect flight level 27010 when set departure. Let's do it departure from uh, Spirit mode. Squawk code 7157. Can we see? Clear no, to, uh, we can't Oscar, see it. <laughs> can't see the taxiway that way either. See what I mean? I mean, this is like, what if you land at this airport? I guess you don't take off from it until morning. Well, we're not going to do that. We're taking off from this airport at this time. 
because that's what we did on the other simulators. Now they have taxi lights. How come this one doesn't have taxi lights? I don't know. Engine seems loud. Ah, crap. Accidentally turned it off. Where the heck is it? Oh great, um, I have no control over it now. Fix it in a moment. I know what we can do. Here, I know. Chris, zero three six heavy. Uh, understand. Uh, just go ahead and uh, you want to you request uh, two seven zero off departure. Is that correct? Let's turn it uh, off. Negative. Uh, we uh, we have received our ATC clearance. Uh, pencil two departure. Okay, that didn't do anything. Uh, we are unable to cross uh, Hoyt at two fifty <laughs> knots. Uh, request to cross uh, Hoyt at Oh, ISP. oh, there we go. We got it. Korean 036 heavy, roger, stand by just a second. Roger, standing by. Korean 036 uh, there. heavy. Uh, go ahead, Korean uh, 036. Yes, when you get to the tower controller, go ahead and make that request to the tower controller, okay? Roger, we'll do that, uh, thanks, uh, Korean 036. I guess we'll take off from this one. Based on the wind. Now you can at least see the lines on this one. Probably announce that I'm taking the runway. That's control shift six. What did I do? Disable the plugin? It doesn't say disconnected. Oh my word. I must have disconnected it out accidentally. Clearance, Sun Country, 8611, parked in a signature, looking for a clearance to Detroit with X ray. Sun Country, 8611, clearance. Cleared to Detroit via pageant two departure Smith transition and as filed maintained. I'm going to reactivate this thing. Here it is here in case I haven't shown it before. Clock 2241. Okay, so we're going to select our plan, which is Load it. Connect the flight simulator. No push and start. Off. We don't need that there. Hilo, India, Hilo, Hilo, traffic, Cessna, 1, 3, Atra, departing runway, 4. Okay. I must have dis disabled it by accident.
Air Shuttle 6159, good morning. We're trying to get clearance to Houston. Air Shuttle 6159, clearance to Houston. Two Houston and the Continental Airport, bit of pounce two departure. Site transition, Dennis Files, I maintain one zero ten thousand. Site flight level three four zero in ten minutes, twelve five seven two four. Yeah, the other All right, we're going to Houston via the power plus site transition, then it's about climbing up to 10,000, expecting 34010 minutes after departure, squawking 5724. How it's about a uh, runway expectation? Air shuttle 6159, um, I'm not sure what you said the first time. I, I thought you said pounce one, but it's a pounce two departure. Mm -hmm. Oh, pounce two departure. Air shuttle 6159, that is correct. Uh, Reback is correct, departure at the stairs current. And uh, what was that last question? I'm trying to pick out a runway. Uh, expect runway for now, runway 27 right for you. Thank you, 27 right. And which ramp are you? We are at Tango uh, 1516. Roger, thank you. Have a good day. Okay, that was weird. You guys saw that, right? Okay, we've got flaps down for takeoff. Okay. Let's do this. Like one hour later. <laughs> this thing pulls to the right. Holy crap. Get up. don't need that on. Clarence American 1842 with Tango going to Charlotte. American 1842. Affirmative. Elo, India, Elo, Elo, Mike, India, traffic, that's one, three, our truck, in the area. And this is the highway. Hilo, India, Hilo, 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 Rob, Mike, India, traffic, test, 1, 3, Arctra, 6 miles, northeast, dead, 1,500. 10,000, uh, 30,000, uh, 10, and 5141, American 1842. American 1842, uh, 1, 0, 10,000, put in this shot through this, make flight level 3, 1, 0, 10 minutes, 8, quiet, get in part, 3, back, correct, 1, 0, 10, go, correct, 8, you're at rev 5. That is affirmative, uh, yeah, 10,031 and 10, 51, 41. Okay. Now I had this problem before. Where's that knob? Ah! We're getting blown over this way. Altitude. To be honest with you, we never got our uh, previous uh, PDG. He says 9611, clear to zero, Delta Fox Trot Airport, get a bar number two departure for a speed transition. Then it's about 5810, 10,000, back flight level 300. Zero, zero, you see what it's doing? It's pulling. It's pulling I'm sorry about that, you're a stepped on piece again. Uh, 9611, can you uh, say that again? To be honest, 9611, clear to zero, Delta Fox Trot Delta Fox Trot Airport. We had a burn of two departures. We're in the transition. Turn this on again. Then it's now climbing a one zero ten thousand. Change it back, back to... Alright. Flight level three zero zero ten minutes. 
I can't see my... I'd like to go in the emergency park here, our red team, transition, 10,000 initially, 300 in the later, clock 71. UBS 9611, we're connected to red park, they take us current. Still turns us. Do you see that? That's 2798. Roger. Uh, uh, we already have it. We've got a message. Can you all call on a parking lot? Uh, I don't know why. That's 2798. Just verifying uh, yeah. the Delta Tango with the Delta Tango. Doesn't seem to work. The parking lot. We transition at a stop. Let me take one zero ten thousand six five zero three zero ten hundred twelve seven two two one. That's what we got. That's what we're moving the yoke here. That's what we're moving the yoke here. That's what we're moving the yoke here. Let's try the heading bug. We're trying to allow. Where are you? still turning us. Okay, it's turning us in this direction. Maybe we need to have a little bit of faith. I don't know. What does this do? Charlie Zulu Airport via the main to departure lug transition. Oh, Direct this is the down. Now I go. Victor, Victor, November. Yeah, 43. Lima, Echo, okay, so Tom, this Tom, adjuster, Tom, now radio this adjuster yeah, heading. 43. Up. The Papa, Lima, Yankee, Echo, Romeo. Thank goodness Direct I got this working. November, out. Oscar, Air Tango. Mike, 215. The Papa India Sierra Alpha Delta. Uniform Mike 215. The November Uniform Delta India Sierra. Uniform Tango 43. The Lima Echo Romeo. Okay, this Uniform is getting Victor. a little better to fly now. Direct I'm a little November bit more happy Oscar with this. Victor Echo Victor. Direct Charlie Mike Zulu. Direct Mike Mike Charlie Zulu. I may say one zero ten oh, thousand. No, 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 no. Next flight level three three zero in okay, ten minutes. Bring a throttle up. Twelve okay. seven one six one. That is six eighty three. That is a bank to luck. Direct to heaven. Okay. Shape How is our RPM? Let's bring this Direct down. Mike two one five. Uh, upper Mike two one five. New to upper Tango forty three. There we got it in the green. Direct to no rev. Direct to Cozumel. Direct to the airport. 10,000 feet. So I guess you have uh, to wear uh, and, night vision uh, goggles when you <laughs> when you when you fly this plane. You need uh, night, night vision up. goggles. I'm sorry, you're too good. Yeah, 683 and at the heaven. J43. All right, let's get some direction, direction line, here. J43 uh, uh, to Lima Echo Golf Golf Tango. Then J43 to fly here. Probably connect, but for my purpose, 
communicate this help in that I have. I need you to read it back the way it is. And um mission up to this one zero ten thousand space flight on three three zero ten. Alright. So J forty three legged J forty three flyer that knows. And then uh, as we uh, said before, ten thousand feet flight level three three zero club seven one. Yes, 683, read back your spring, Mark dated uniform is now current, and uh, which ramp are you at? We're on ramp uh, uh, 6. Ramp 6, thank you, you have a good day. Can you get frequency for center? Radio, that's 1, 3, Fox route. you give me the frequency for center? It's a simple question, but they say, oh, you forgot your charts, huh? Sass, one, three, Foxtrot. You forgot your charts, huh? No problem. Contact Chicago Center. On one, one three, four, point two, five. One, three, four, point two, five, one, three, Foxtrot. Chicago Center. That's not one, three, Foxtrot. Out of four thousand, five hundred, four, five hundred, five, four. Sass, not one, three, Foxtrot. Cleared as filed. Four five seven four. Four five seven four. That's not one three. Fox truck. Uh, clearance on sixteen thirty six. Sixteen thirty six, Yeah, ground is calling us to call you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why, but I'm not done. Uh, uh, okay, it's uh, revised clearance. I'm not sure what all this does. Uh, I'll see Yay! <laughs> okay. I'm good with the plane now. It's still not easy to land, but... You have a good weekend, Southwest 4278. Southwest 4278, thank you. Maintain 31, they're not the data yet. 3 center, Southwest 14, 4278. Southwest 4278, flight level 303 over 10 knots. Southwest 4278, Chicago Center, Rogers. Let's go ahead and move to the co pilot section here. We can get a better look at these gauges. Okay, so fuel flow, should we be in the green? South of 6559, clear direct to Payne, cross Meg, that maintains 1-1000. One, one We're in climb. South of 7302, Niner. We can sort of see. Nice that that was lit up too. That doesn't seem to be going down, does it?
There we go. Guys, 4533, Chicago Center Climb, maintain level 230. See how there's two needles here, right and left? Guys, 4533, contact Indianapolis Center 124.52. Good day. Get them into the. There's two needles here, too. Alright, we get them up into the green. Get a back seat. Oops. Well, that's not the way. Wisconsin 3824 at Hall, maintain 300 knots. Contact Chicago approach 119.0. Good morning. Good morning. Wisconsin 4278 cross make that maintain 11000 you're clear direct make believing 21 all right out of 21 direct meg meg at 11000 south of 4278 south of center 3029 or 3029 south of 4278 we can sit in the back seat now <laughs> well that sounded good Sixty-five fifty-nine, clear There we go. We look out the window now. You can be a passenger. Stop. Five. Yeah, unfortunately, but I will be breaking it as soon as I don't. Yeah, I need you in the wind. That's the problem. So the wind's actually helping me with your slow speed. Cessna on three, Fox, contact Chicago Center on one, three, four, point two, five, one, three, four, point two, five, one, three, Chicago Center, Cessna, one, three, Chicago Center, four thousand five hundred, four, five hundred, IFR. Cessna on three, 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 Cessna on Approach Cessna one three Octra is with you out of four thousand five hundred or five hundred IFR. Cessna one three Foxtrot radar contact. Altimeter is two niner niner two. Okay, let me show you the autopilot again. Right here. Now you can press up and down, but do you see how it doesn't do anything? The same thing as when I have a it doesn't change anything either. Okay, 1574, thank so you basically for just activate it, here. just activate it when you're at the thing that you want to be at. Remember 4491, Gums Lake, Chicago Center, 134, decimal 87. 134, decimal 87, come on, come on, 449. That was 6559, do not exceed 300 knots. Okay, well, we're not doing that. Okay, now I forgot to load traffic. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's. That was Thompson 3784, final. That sounds funny. That was Thompson 3784, Chicago Center, Rogers. Let's go ahead and load world traffic. Okay. 
just so you can kind of see how you do this. Two five seven five. You have a great weekend, Southwest forty two seventy eight. I'll change be here. Our, yeah, me uh, too. Yeah, me too. Change our airport to that. Cruising out one nine or zero. You can expect all the We're at forty six hundred. We're in a light prop. Okay. So we'll have maximum flight plans. Keep the density Morning. around eighty. Sentiment. Level two, three, zero. Um, let's do 29 nautical miles as far as the load radius. Keep all this up. Water T46, 41, set up maintain, follow the three, zero, zero, then cross five miles so southeast of Boston. Have to maintain, follow the three, five, zero. Let's all right, some military zero, flights zero, out here, yeah. just a little bit. Okay, now that we got this, we go over here, click flights. You have to kind of do it twice. Chicago, good morning, Frontier 453, 340, smooth. Frontier 5453, Chicago Center, good morning, mostly big Thanks. You're not going to be able to see it just yet, but there, it's going to pull something up here where it's telling you what it's doing. Rating flight plans. Chicago Southwest, 4601 out of 360 out of Crown Route. Ground routes don't exist for departure. I'm about that. And arrival, no taxi number. Southwest 4601, Chicago Central, Hello, Fox 1354. 1354, Southwest 4601. 25.75, good day. And this is telling you uh, warning, disable this. You have to go back and forth. But can't find parking spot for flight 29, flight 59. But just going to close that. Now it will generate traffic. They just won't taxi anywhere. They'll land and then they, or you know, they'll land and disappear. They'll appear. Chicago Central 134. That's the one eight seven. 5,000, O'Hare Altimeter 3024. Now, what I don't understand is, like, ProFlight Emulator will give you taxi instructions. The default ATC will give you traffic, you know, instructions. If it can do that, why can't it give AI traffic instructions? That doesn't Tactic, make sense Taxi, Cleveland Center 119 or point three two. Good morning. 0932, United 384, good morning. I have two aircraft calling two different frequencies. American 1574, Chicago Center, Clinton, the O'Hare Airport, via direct Watson and the Watson 3 arrival. Watson contact Chicago Center, 134, that's the 187. 3487, Solomon. Okay, so if you're wondering, that is live ATC. Contact, ATC. Level I downloaded the files, put them into Audacity, and because the different time frames will have different things spaced out. So. Fifteen seventy four, Center maintain total two three zero and clear direct home. And I did an hour worth of uh your stuff. Frank Yard thirty five ninety one, you're clear to the Hare Airport, Vitter Watson and the Watson three arrival. Now we got seventeen miles to go. I think this is our airport right up here. Two four zero seven four six one. Hey. Oh, 
Good morning. We're on the uh, here, the old Herald Cemetery is 3024, climb maintain level 230. Let's report our position. 2000. Five or clear at Quad Three, Foxtrot, 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 Foxtrot
Let's see if we can get an approach thing. Maintain two zero zero. Procedures. Select approach. Sky on point thirty seven fifty eight four two. Well, there is an ILS for two. On point thirty seven fifty eight Chicago Center. Good morning. Four seven. One three four decimal eight seven. One three four decimal eight seven. Seven eight four. Pat, I remember hearing that. I kept thinking they were saying human. <laughs> I'm out of space. Two. And who's checking us? Yeah. That's 3784, Chicago Center, Clutter, Tall, Saint 310, not your greater. That's our holding pattern over here. Chicago Center, what? 4728, Chicago Center, hello. And just on a main team, follow up to Okay. Gotta keep, keep an eye on this. Wisconsin 3767, Wisconsin, cross safety at a maintain level 250. 290 and cross, uh, taking the picture. Safety, Delta, Alpha, India, Fox, and Edmonds, 25. Oh, no, cross five miles east of Watson at a maintain level 25. You're going to realize you didn't have anything in there, Charlotte. Okay, uh, slide the side of Watson and 252, Wisconsin 3762. Oh, center channel 3603, 31, 4, 5, 5, 3, 6, 0, smooth ride. Got it, 3603, Chicago Center, good morning. Okay, I think we're good there. Let's look up the frequency for... Chicago Center, 134, that's more easy. 134, ILS, 2. Cessna 1 3 Foxtrot, turn right, heading 215. Right 221513 Foxtrot. Right 215. Looks like it's taking us to the holding area. Number 6254, we do normal speed. Normal speed, number 6254. Thompson 3762, South Texas, Chicago, Central, 134, decimal 87. 3487, Wisconsin, 3762. 1, 0. Okay, it's a 
same localizer. We need to be at 3,000 on our way out before we get to Q-Pad. Cessna 1, Fox Trot, turn right, heading 240. Right to 240, 3, Fox Trot. It's on that one. <laughs> Gotta use our night vision goggles to make sure. It's going to be a long video. American 1574 at Halls, maintain 300 even kind of cock approach now, 119 or 0. How long would it take to drive from Kankakee to Bloomington? I wonder. Alright. Takes about an hour and 38 minutes. So yeah, I guess you can drive there quicker um, than we um, can fly there. On, uh, on a fix for you here. Hold on one second. It's not as much fun though. Cessna, one three, box truck, turn right, heading three one zero. Roger, right two three one zero one three. Roger, right two three Getting Bloomington uh, chat now. Never fit to roll forty. Turn right on Gulf one time to a Texas Rim V Gulf Cross from White Two Hundred at Gulf. Cessna one three box truck descend and maintain five hundred. Out of three thousand four five hundred one three truck truck. I'm not doing that because you're nuts. Oh, 
close to higher altitude. Now they're going to be low. Broken traffic, pulling to no more for authorities, conducting an airfield lighting inspection on taxiway Fox 1 and Fox 1. Any traffic in the area, please advise the limits of traffic. Yeah, I am much more happier with this plane now, now that we've been able to figure out how to get it under control. Cessna 1 3 box truck turn right heading 3 5 0 Roger right 2 3 5 0 Cessna 1 3 box truck Cessna 1 3 Foxtrot cleared to final 4 runway 2 contact tower on 124.61 established. Out of 3,400 till established on final 4. Runway 2 1 3 Foxtrot. Tower Cessna 1 3 Foxtrot at 1 1 miles to the south at 3,000 high for landing. Cessna 1 3 Foxtrot, continue approach your number 1 or landing. Continue approach number 1 or landing. Cessna 1 3 Foxtrot.
Houston traffic, Boma Sierra, we're in breath, we're in golf, runway one, we're in golf, we're in sound, and it's now off the turn, off the field, at the turn, off the turn. Okay, Houston traffic, Boma Sierra, we're in breath, we're in Oh my goodness. Okay, gotta get down. Whoops. Not that much. Ground to Dever 5034. Dever 5034, blow it again. Uh, we are ready to taxi to runway 20. Dever 5034, roger. Did you pick up information, Oscar? You want me to train to do? Uh, we can pick that up, Dever 5034. Dever 5034, roger. Advise Oscar, runway 20. Taxi via Foxtrot 1, Foxtrot 4. Foxtrot 1, Foxtrot, runway 20, Dever 5034. What do we have here? Do we have poppy lights up here? Times I wish I had a yoke. And fifty thirty four has Oscar. Okay, I think there were fifty four thirty four rush, thank you. Keep a steady hand on this. I can't. There we go. Those do look like poppy lights. Ground to Dever 5034. Dever 5034, blow it again. Uh, we are ready to taxi to runway 20. Dever 5034, roger. Did you pick up information, Oscar? You want me to train to Too low. Uh, we can pick that up, Dever 5034. Dever 5034, roger. Advise Oscar, runway 20, taxi via Foxtrot 1, Foxtrot. Foxtrot 1, Foxtrot, runway 20, Dever 5034. It is hard to look at the controls. Crap, oh, man. And fifty thirty four has Oscar. See what I mean? This is not easy to control. The Cessna wasn't too bad. I can do that. And tower number 5034 is ready to go at 20. We gotta watch our speed here. We don't wanna. Number 5034, Blue Moon Tower, runway 20, clear for takeoff, fly runway heading, maintain 5000. Clear for takeoff, runway 20, Number 5034. Cessna 1 3 box truck wind 0 1 5 at 8 altimeter is 2 9 or 9 or 2 clear to land runway 2 Clear to land, runway 2, 1, 3, hot truck. We are getting a little too low. Flight 
711, how do you hear? Uh, Envoy 3711, moving to ground, loud and clear. like the movie Airplane. <laughs> Going back and forth, back and forth. And nicely. Ooh. That was Cessna rough. one three box truck contact ground on one two one point six five when clear of the active one two one point six five one three box truck well we didn't crash but ground Cessna one three box truck clear of the active runway Test one, one, three, box truck. Hold your position. I think, yeah, there it is. Cessna one, three, box truck. Stand by. Well, we can see the taxiway now. Cessna one, three, box truck. Stand by. Cessna 1, 3, Fox Truck. Taxi to Terminal. Taxi to Terminal. Cessna 1, 3, Fox Truck. Convoy 3711, ground runway 20, taxi via Fox Truck. Wind clear of the active. Fox Truck 1, Fox Truck. here. I've been wondering, why do these lights glow on and off? There's like three of them. Did you see those when we were coming in for landing? I, uh, what are they? On 137, contact your departure today. Maybe it's just to help you find the that's crazy, they're flipping back and forth. Maybe it's just to help you with taxing. Personal 5843, just got your reroute. The center wants to know about how long it'll take you to get this into your system and be ready to go. Okay, um, so figure about five minutes and you'll have it in your system and then you'll be ready for departure. Let's go, only take us a minute or two. Okay. Tower, pull 14. 14, tower. Get out of the way, Clearly, Prepare for the park. Roger, 
city squad. Right, Fishable 5843, full route clearance to Dallas Fort Worth. Clear to Dallas Fort Worth Airport via Kirksville, India, Romeo Kilo. Jet 87, Tulsa, Tango, Uniform Lima. Claw or Kalong, Kilo Lima, off of Whiskey Whiskey. And victory to arrival. Rest your clearance remains the same. All right, uh, in your Romeo Kilo, Jet 87, Tulsa Claw, and the victory to your show, 5843. Show 5843, read back track. Power pull 14 is off runway 20 or golf. Again, see taxiways golf, golf one, golf two. <coughs> Taxi yeah, lights that golf, actually golf two, illuminate the ground would be nice. The fact that you can't see the ground is not acceptable in my opinion. Yeah, shuttle's ready when you already got it all plugged in. And the cabin lights. Air shuttle 5843, boom runway 20, clear for takeoff, fly runway heading, maintain 10,000. So those are my complaints. Day, FT0, There's no illumination for the outside lights on the ground. And I did find out from center it is volume this morning for some reason. Wow. Right. And the cabin There's lights don't on. appear to work. Even though there are knobs, they they don't do anything. We're going to have to come back around and uh, take off the other two big machines. Shuttle 5843, Boomer to tell you, Roger. You just want to make a 180 and back taxi, or you want to go ahead and taxi back on the taxiways? We can make a 180 and back taxi. Parking brakes. 5843, 180 is approved. New back taxi is approved. And runway right 20, you're still clear for takeoff. Thank you. Yeah, we got it. Contact PR departure today. Departure is on PDP. Tower, pull 14 is holding sharp runway 29er at Golf White, inspect 29er exit at Alpha. Pull 14, tower, proceed runway 29er exit at Alpha. Proceed runway 29er exit at Alpha, pull 14. Okay, turn that off. Oh, we were supposed to turn the fuel pump up off when we were at a... I guess when I... It didn't seem to... bother anything. Look at this. We used like half, almost half of our fuel. Boy, gas mileage this thing does not have good... is not good with. How come they didn't turn off the lights? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to bother with it. It's fine. All right. Now yeah, we got this. Which ones are the cabin lights? Nah, I'm going to keep it on. All right. No, we probably should have that on. <laughs> All right, let's get out of the plane here. All right. Well, we don't have the reality expansion pack, but we can go ahead and do our chalk blocks. There we go. And we're all set. All right. Well, now that we are here at uh, Bloomington Normal, let's go ahead and take a look and see what the airport looks like for real.
All right. We are looking at a satellite view of the Central Illinois Regional Airport. And this way is facing uh, north, as you would expect. Now, some interesting things that I've been noticing is that it looks like this may have been a runway at one time. And I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Because they've got uh, the X's on there. Although, they've got an X over here, too. Yeah, this is definitely a runway. But So they've got all this blocked off. They took out the runway marker. The funny thing is this. <laughs> what's this jet doing here? <laughs> if this is all closed off, what's this guy doing? Uh, something else. And this is kind of bizarre. This is supposedly closed off too. This looks awfully f thin. Doesn't this look thin? For a taxiway? Maybe it's for a little car or something. I don't know. This one's here. Yeah, that's a car. That's what that is. See, there's a road that comes through. Actually, it looks like it comes through in a... Uh, kind of like that. And then there's another one right there. But I wonder why it's closed. It looks okay. Who knows? Here's another weird thing. I don't expect, you know, a road to be coming from like a street here and coming all the way up here to the runway. That doesn't seem normal, does it? Got a couple... Whatever this is. Oh, that... Okay. Looks like this actually were roads at one time. But my goodness, that's a mess. So over here, we've got a residential area. It looks like we got... Pond. <laughs> got some ponds over here. We've got one in here in the... Um, Neighborhood. I bet those houses are not cheap. And we just got a lot of... A lot of open space out here. So let's compare this with what's an X-plane. So here we are looking at uh, the airport in X-plane. And it's pretty much right on track with how it is in real life. You've got the runway kind of closed off right there. Uh, if you look closely, you can see an X there and an X there. So that uh, taxiway is closed off. Oh, I don't remember seeing this. I saw this row, but I don't remember seeing the X's on it. But here they are here on that tiny little road. Oh, look at this. And they have this marked off, too. I don't remember seeing that. And How are you supposed to get over here? Maybe you're not supposed to get over there. Maybe they're... I don't know. Maybe they're X'ing it off because they don't want people driving through here. Here's that road that comes from the um, main street here. And that mess. This is the orthophotos. Here is that residential neighborhood that's got the uh, lake in it. And then we've got the one pond, the other pond. Here's the other pond. So I love the orthophotos. I mean, it really gives you a sense on what it should look like here. 
um, as well as the overlays. The overlays um, really help fill things out. That's why I really like them. It doesn't do everything, or everything perfectly for that matter. Like these buildings here are not, are not even here. And then you've got all these trees that are like where there shouldn't be trees. <laughs> it's like, here's some buildings. Oh, nope, let's play some trees. Here's some more. Let's play some trees. <laughs> so it doesn't, doesn't always work the way it's supposed to. But if you're flying, you don't really notice it too much. Some areas you do. Um, one thing I did notice over here and by the way it looks like there's static scenery here too so they've got like a, a delta um, not sure which one that one is or that one that is not world traffic I don't have world traffic activated at the moment helicopters so those are just static but they got cars. See the cars in the parking lot? So that's that's a good thing. All right. So look at this nice open. Don't mess around, Shadow. All right. Um Let's go ahead and take a look at some information about the airport itself. So here we are. These, this website is CIRA.com. CIRA. Central Illinois Regional Airport. And as you can see, uh, Frontier uh, is showing here. I don't, you know, this would be interesting to know if world traffic is actually placing Frontier Airlines here I don't know specifically and I don't feel like waiting 10 minutes to load it up <laughs> the future is now what else do we have here okay Delta all right we saw the there's the one plane there Orlando Chicago Allegiant Dallas Orlando, Allegiant. So there's a few airlines that show up here. Allegiant, American, Delta, uh, that Frontier. Maybe I should load up world traffic and just see what, a what it actually pulls up. So here are, okay, yeah, here's the airlines. Yeah, Allegiant, American, Delta, Frontier. Let's see. We should see how accurate world traffic is. I, I bet you're probably all interested in that. Parking and tra uh, transportation. It's your typical stuff at the airport. Okay, let's look at art and history at the airport. That could be interesting. Our terminal features many pieces of artwork created by artists from throughout central Illinois. CIRA is a gateway to diverse and vibrant such an Illinois region. We take pride in the artwork on display. That's cool. And here's some other things. Dining and shopping. Got the Jetstream restaurant and radar bar. Got some menus here too. Route 66 gifts, turbo grill. Have a meal before you begin your journey or upon your return. I don't know if we're going to get food here or not. Um, we'll drive around town and see what we can find. Let's take a look about the airport itself. Okay, as you know, the airport code is BMI or KBMI, but our friends call it CIRA. The airport industry is chock full of acronyms, blah, blah. So what's the difference? Well, we know what CIRA stands for. That's the official name under which we do business. But in aviation speak, we're known as BMI, which is the airport code. 
It stands for Internet, blah, 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 blah. The letters BMI are derived from our location in Bloomington, a city whose name contains all three letters of our airport code. Shadow, don't go on top of that. Meryl. It looks like they got uh, FedEx. Our history spans back to the 1920s when our airport began, began as a private field. And then 1934, uh, Sierra came into existence with the dedication of a new airfield. The result of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt's New Deal program to fund recovery efforts during the Depression area. And now there are four major airlines serving eight destinations. Air Cargo. Syria isn't just about commercial flights and private aircraft. It's also busy with cargo. So FedEx could be another thing that we might see there too. It'd be interesting. The uh, traffic programs with FSX obviously work better. I say obviously because um, X-Plane 11's not quite there yet. It's it's getting better. Uh, let's see. Alpor conference room contact us doing business. Let's look at general aviation since that kind of falls in for us. Hangar rental fueling aircraft maintenance. Okay, for pilots. Runway two, runway eleven, charter flights. Hmm. Okay. We're out here waiting for our rental car to come, but just thought you might take might want to take a look around here at the uh, front of the airport. This is that parking lot that I told you about that had all the cars sitting there. Well, that's usually what a parking lot has. Then there's this thing, which is an interesting piece of art. Yep. So this is Bloomington Normal, which that is actually two cities, <laughs> Bloomington and also Normal. They just put it together like a hyphenated name, you know, like a person who has a hyphenated name. All right, and our car is here, so let's go. Here we are at our first stop in Bloomington Normal. Um, one source says it's a normal, but yeah, when you look at a map, normal is uh, north of Bloomington, so I don't know. I'm just going to say Bloomington Normal. But if we look this direction over here, this is the headquarters for State Farm Insurance. Now, I know you may be thinking, okay, what's the big deal about that? Well, most of the residents uh, here, at least from what I've researched, work at State Farm Insurance. And State Farm Insurance is a big insurance company. And this is where they're located. So, all right. Well, cool. Let's go ahead and get to our next destination. Okay, here's our next stop, and we'll just go ahead and, uh, well, you can't see the sign. Let's just move up a little bit. That might be a little too much. I <laughs> can't even see that. Alright, that's not too bad. So, Grady's. Okay, this is a this is a pizza joint called uh, Brady's. Oh, look at this, <clears throat> Barney, really? <laughs> Pooh Bear and Tigger, though, that's cool. I don't I, Barney. Come on, my daughter would like this. She she loves Pooh Bear and uh, Tigger, and she's an adult now, and there's nothing wrong with that. So this is historic route, US 66. 
how is this this doesn't make any sense because route 66 went down another way so take a look at this map this is the historic US 66 so what is this <laughs> I, I don't know yeah, but this is a pizza uh, place, and right down here, is it over here, or is it over here? Oh, no, it's, it's right there. Right over here is Grady's Fun Park. There's a bunch of Fun Park. Why are you crying, Talia? But uh, let's go ahead and go into the pizza, well, no, I'm sorry, we can't go into it, it's closed. But we can look at their menu. Okay, so here's the address and phone number. Open Tuesday through Sunday. Uh, we'll t click on about. Okay, about. So in 1959, James and Mary Grady created a recipe for pizza with a sweet sauce that we are now famous for today. Uh, and that's what I thought was interesting. Um, uh, in uh, Bloomington. That's why I wanted to kind of check this out. Uh, although they're closed and we can't have any of that sauce. But anyway, 1982, the business was passed on to Jack and Bev Grady. They started a family fun park with the same recipe for success. If you keep the quality, you will keep the customers. So that's about them. We'll get to the restaurant menu here in a moment. Uh, let's see. News. Uh, Grady's hiring part-time positions. And then there is events. Okay, nothing really. Here's uh, Grady's Fun Park. So, you know, it's it's your typical fun park. But this this is kind of nice. you got a pizza place you can bring the kids to. And you got this little uh, fun park. Uh, oh, the fun park is closed for the season. So it's... I wouldn't be able to go in there right now. Uh, some reviews. I thought it would give us a little bit more information as far as what's there at the park. Uh, work with us. Items for sale. Grady's Pizza. Oh, that just takes us back to Grady's Pizza. Wait a minute. What did I miss here? Oh, okay. This is a separate site. And what I thought it was... Uh, still part of Grady's Pizza. Okay, so Fun Pack. All right, no, no. Owl Story. Okay, Owl Story. We work hard to provide a safe, clean, fun place for our guests. Oh, okay, so this is the kind of the same thing that we already read. Oh, well, this here is not, though. Grady's has set a reputation as a clean, wholesome place to eat and have fun. Our family fun park is a clean place for families to come, enjoy, and create memories. So there's 10 kitty rides for adult rides, 16 bumper boats, and with water blasters um, we saw that we, we saw something like that at um, um, Joliet if I'm not mistaken I think it was Joliet or was it Aurora no no Joliet was the uh, was the route 66 okay it was Aurora uh, 16 bumper cars with laser tag with water blasters oh so your bumper cars where you shoot laser tag Oh, now that sounds cool. And NASCAR-themed go-karts. All right, so here's all the rides. Let's click on bumper boats. i got to read this thing. 450 per ticket. Well, that's kind of cool. Although, that might be only one, one ride. Um, rules. Okay, it doesn't really say anything there. We've got group specials, news, et cetera, et cetera. We'll go back to Grady's Pizza now. And we'll go to the restaurant menu. So here we go. Here's their here's their menu. You got deluxe, super deluxe, meat lover. Okay, so it's your typical it's your typical pizzas. All right. Well, that was fun. Um, let's go ahead and go to our next destination.
we are here at our next destination which is right here it's a little blurred out but this is where beer nuts are made so beer nuts uh, originate and are are made here and and shipped to uh, grocery stores around the country uh, maybe out of country I, I don't know but this is where the beer nuts are made in case you, <laughs> in case you were ever wondering and this is the factory and company store right here in 1937 Edward Shirk took over caramel crisp confectionery store in in downtown Bloomington one of their products was called Redskins, glazed peanuts with their red skins intact. The name changed to Beer Nuts in 1953 when the Shirks began packaging the nuts for the national liquor stores in Bloomington. The company moved into their current processing plant in 1973. The plant includes a public company store with nuts and souvenirs. A video tour of the planet, or <laughs> the planet of the plant is also available. Uh, and there's a website here for beer nuts. Go ahead and click that there. So here we go. A little animation, well, video. Good times, great nuts. <laughs> go nuts, beer nuts. Original bar keg, all kinds of stuff. So here you go, there's all their products. Original peanuts and original bar mix, all that stuff here. Our story. A peanut of legends, beer nuts. Our secret family recipe has its roots somewhere in Bloomington, Illinois. <laughs> Smack dab in the middle of the good old U.S. of A. Is it in the middle? I didn't realize Illinois was in the middle. Anyway, Russell Shirk packaged peanuts and other specialty nuts for the family restaurant, confectionery, and two local liquor stores. With a catchy name and smart distribution, word got out, and over half a century later, the Shirks are still selling them across the land. In fact, we still produce all Beer Nuts products at our 100,000 square foot facility in Bloomington. We think you'll agree that the unique sweet and salty taste continues to be the beer's best match. And so, there you are. 1937, just out of high school, Arlo Shirk, with the help of his pop, Edward purchases the Caramel Crisp Shop in Bloomington. Known locally for caramel apples, caramel corn, and orange drink, the Red Skip peanuts are what really kept customers coming back again and again. And uh, feedback. That's all right. So, all kinds of stuff here. This uh, timeline looks interesting. Uh, Russell Shirk takes charge of the shop. Russell packages the first bags of his red skin peanuts. And then Russell teams up with Eldridge Brewster, a local potato chip distributor, and they christen the band brand Beer Nuts. In 1960, we're everywhere now. You can find Beer Nuts on every bar across the land, even Alaska and Hawaii. 72, we use the same sweet and salty recipe to coat the newest nut to our line. Beer Nuts Almonds, they add it. 2002, another round of new packaging hits the shelves. Oh, even Norn from Cheers can't get enough. Cheers, in case you're wondering, is a TV show where everyone knows your name. 2006, we introduced Beer Nuts Original Bar Mix. How did we not think of this sooner? I don't know. I could go for some Beer Nuts right now. 2017, that was last year. This was the year to spice things up. Guacamole, yes. Chili, lim chili lemon, black bean, and sriracha. And then today, still family owned. All right, well, I th hope you thought that was interesting. Um, yeah, figure beer nuts. I, I mean, that's kind of cool, you know? Something that makes uh, Bloomington uh, what it is. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll head to our next destination. All right, 
we are here and this is ah you can't really see it here let's uh move over here a little bit wow you can't really see the big trees in the way hold on let's go back over here okay so this here is the David Davis Mansion. You might be wondering, okay, what is that? So let's, uh, let's pull up some information. So see, there you go, that's it. Also called Clover Lawn, this Victorian home was built in 1872 for U.S. Supreme Court Justice David Davis. In his early days, Davis rode the circuit with Abraham Lincoln. As president, Lincoln appointed Davis to the U.S. Supreme Court. The Davis Mansion served as a focal point for the social, cultural, and political life of Bloomington. Today, it is operated by the Illinois Preservation. Um, we'll go ahead and go to their website right here, David Davis Mansion. Take a mansion tour. Uh, year bit was 1872, 60,000 visitors per year. Looks like they do some role playing too. So we're not going to read all that. <laughs> but here's some information about uh, the David Davis Mansion. And you got tours. Let's see, there's a garden apparently. Upper, upper garden. Yeah, let's see, there's some pictures here. <laughs> the slides go every which way but yeah take a look at that so that's that's pretty cool um, there's a shop and you know some other stuff so here's a site if you're into Abraham Lincoln and, and his history then this is definitely a place to check out so let's go ahead and go to our next destination. Here we are at our next location, which is right over here. Kind of a nice looking building. This is the McLean County Museum. Um, and there's a couple of things uh, in here, at least that I was able to find. So, here's the description. The museum is located on a public square in the heart of the historic Bloomington Central Business District in Old McLean County, or in the Old McLean County Courthouse, an American Renaissance style structure built between 1901 and 1903. I bet that thing is built to last. Both the district and the courthouse are listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The museum features seven exhibit galleries. Award-winning exhibits guide visitors through the county's history, including Making a Home, Farming in the Great Corn Belt, and Abraham Lincoln in McLean County. The Pioneer Discovery Gallery is a hands-on experience very popular with kids and adults. The museum also has one of the finest genealog geneal genealogical reference libraries in the count country. So if you're looking to you do your genealogy, I, I said the word right, uh, <laughs> this is the place. The museum is now also the home of the Cruisin' with Lincoln on 66 Visitors Center. And I do have uh, that link also. But I want to pull up the McLean website. So McLean County Museum of History. It's closed for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I can't go there. Um, so you got Mish. So here's like an inside view of some exhibits. So that's kind of cool. And here's your research um, for genealogy. Uh, there's a gift shop. Route 66. There's a blog. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's take a look at exhibits here. 
So exhibits, we got Challenge, Choices, and Change. Frederick Goody, the Titan of Type. Oh, I guess it has to do with typefaces. Pedal Power, hosted by State Farm, which is pretty big there in Bloomington. That's where the main headquarters is. Abraham Lincoln, Hands-On Pioneer Discovery Room, and the Courthouse Exhibit. Online exhibits. So there's some online exhibits here. Well, it doesn't look like it. Past exhibits. So, got architectural treasures from the Stevenson House. The County Courthouse. Come and get it! The Way We Ate, 1830-2008. Oh, I'm interested in the 1830 thing. I'm really interested to see, you know, the type of foods and stuff. The Kickapoo Indians. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be in, insulting by the fact that I'm laughing at it, but I just... It's, it's like kick a poo. Um, I'll kind of leave it there. Gifts to the Prairie. Uh, turbulent Time, Perspectives of the Vietnam War. Oh, man, this, this page just goes... All right, you guys can look at this if you want. It, it just goes down the page. Uh, here's all your research stuff. Uh, there's Cemetery Walks. And about... Let's look at the history. Traces back to 1892, McLean County Historical Society was founded. Education institution dedicated to telling the rich story of McLean County. There's uh, 20,000 objects in here that make up the galleries. More than 1,500 are rare and hard to find books on local history and genealogy. Uh, 2,000 feet of historical papers and images. That's Pretty cool. Here's a timeline. Vision statement. Museum. I'm interested in the architecture. Let's look at this. Old McLean County Courthouse is an American Renaissance style that was a uh, structure built between 1901 and 1903. It is situated on a public square in the heart of the historical Bloomington Central Business District. Look at this. Inside. Look at that. I, I've always been impressed with the paintings that are on the ceiling. Because I always wonder, how do they do that? Either they paint it and put it up there, or they paint it while it's up there. Either way, it's impressive. Okay, so this is made out of limestone. We, we, uh, we talked about limestone. That wasn't Joliet. Uh, let's see. Solid masonry construction, rectangular and symmetrical... 2004, the dome and drum were restored. I guess something happened to it. Interior of the old courthouse structure is composed of quadrants set apart by broad hallways. The rotunda rises over 100 feet and finished at the top with an allegorical painting representing peace and prosperity. That's, that's cool. Uh, let's see. Halls are richly embellished with mosaic floors. Three original courtrooms are finished with decorative paintings, marble dados. <laughs> I've never heard of that. And scagliola. That sounds like a virus or something. Only one original painting remains, pictured above. This one here. And what now functions as the library reading room. Wow. This is cool. This is so cool. All right, then we got Cruising with Lincoln on 66. This must be like around the corner or something. Uh, it's got the same address, but it must be like around the corner because there's a sign and stuff. The Cruising with Lincoln on 66 Visitor Center is located on the ground floor of the nationally accredited McLean County Museum. Visitors Center serves as a gateway, the only one of its kind in the area. Discover the history of travel along the road through an interpretive exhibit and shop for unique gift items local to the area this might be unique um or i mean i can see why it's unique because this may be the only place on route 66 that has to do with abraham lincoln i could be wrong but that's what i'm thinking here take a trip through the history of route 66 in central illinois 
Visitor Center features an exhibit which tells the story of a railroad's transformation into the Mudder Road and how the road changed the surrounding communities. The gift shop offers steak and shake non-perishables. Keep this in mind. There's a reason for this, okay? Abraham Lincoln and Route 66 publications, souvenirs, route maps, blah, blah, blah. All right, and there is even a website, if I can click on it, for cruising with Lincoln on 66. So here we go. All kinds of stuff here. Celebrates Bloomington Normal's rich historical connection to both Route 66 and Abraham Lincoln. This looks like a fun place to go visit. This is why I like doing these documentaries, because you... You learn learn so much. Visitor Center. We'll do that and we'll do Explore. Uh, okay, so... Here you go, Monday through Saturday. Free Wi-Fi. Admission. Admission to the Visitor Center is free for everyone. Well, there you go. A free place to go. Looks pretty cool, too. Um, there's parking, public transportation. Is there anything more down here? See where our visitors come from. There you go. All over. And then explore. All right, Route 66 map. Looking for, look, I want to see the Route 66 map. I've always wanted to get a map of the original Route 66. 1920s and 30s, 30s and 40s, and then 40s and 50s. Ah, now I see. So this is the original Route 66, and then they did, they wrapped it around. Okay, now I see why there's an area of Route 66 that is not Route 66. Oh, and also, when we're on Mercer, that was definitely not Route 66. We just turned off of it, but... Now, see, I know this gives the route of Route 66, but I would just love to see an actual road map of the original Route 66. I think that would just be cool. But this is still cool, too. So if you wanted to travel down Route 66... You know, the bet, the, I mean, because it's not really there anymore, but if you wanted to follow the same kind of path, here you go. This is where you would want to go. Go, go to this site, and it highlights all the roads that, that you would need to travel on. This is pretty cool. I have yet, I, this is the first time ever I've been able to find something this detailed. All the way to Los Angeles. See? This is cool. This is like totally cool. Ah, uh, okay. Well. Let's go to our next location. We are here at our next uh, location. We got to turn around here. A little bit difficult there, but this is it right here. And let's let's walk around the corner over here. Okay, so this right here, this uh, pizza place, Monica's, I think it's that Monica's? Monocle's Pizza. Now you may be thinking, well, what's so special about this place? Well, this is the very, this is the location of the very first Steak and Shake, which is a restaurant that I love. And that's not out where I'm at, but Steak and Shake is awesome. Actually, we do have a Steak and Shake, but it's inside of, uh, 
it's, I don't know. It's not a. It's not an actual stick and shape building. It's like inside something. So it's. It's not the same. But yeah. So this is the first. Uh, where the first stake and shake was at. Right here. Oh look. Monaco's Pizza, and you can see the big trees aren't there because it's it's winter time. All right, so Guth and Edith Belt owned a Shell gas station in Bloomington in the 1920s. They attached a dining room and began selling Shell chicken. Gas quickly realized, or Gus <laughs> quickly realized that the area had plenty of chicken restaurants. However, and changed his line to steak burgers. And the first steak and shake was born in 1934. There it is. Steak and shake driving. Yeah, I mean, I know it's not much. There we go, get a bigger picture. In sight it must. True flavor shakes. It's a meal. Man, steak and shake is great. Uh, what's great about it, what I like about it, is that it, it can be fast food where you go through the drive through or you can go inside and sit down like it's a restaurant. And I don't mean like a McDonald's or Burger King restaurant or anything like that. I mean something where you go in and there is a, a person there that uh, will will have you wait or whatever, or, you know, ask you... Okay, how many is in your party? And then they go, they go in and take you, uh, you know, to your table. So, and and this is like the only place that I've seen so far that's like that, where you can go, you can go through the drive-through, um, you can go inside, and there's like a section where you can just, you know, walk up to the counter and, and go order, um, or you can you you can uh, talk to the front you know, person and, you know, and say, hey, you know, I'd like to, you know, sit down, you know, a table for two or three. And that's what I like about it. And they've got great burgers. There's a variety of them. And the shakes, oh my, they got tons of shakes, tons and tons of shakes. Um, here is an actual steak and shake. Uh, well, that's big. <laughs> but that's the logo for Steak and Shake. So, uh, let's, let's go to a Steak and Shake um, menu. Okay, so here we go. You know, I can't I could not find an official steak and shake website. I thought that was weird. Um I just found other sites that just had stuff, but um here is what they got. You know, they got steak frank, Philly double who a Philly double steak burger, Sriracha, Western Bacon, Wisconsin buttery. Oh, those are good. Um Single steak burger. Here's like meals under four bucks. Signature steak franks. Salads and sandwiches. Classic melts. Chili. Sides. I'm telling you, they got tons of stuff here. And milkshakes. Check this out. You got your chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, banana, mocha, Hershey's special dark, or orange freeze. And then you can add this stuff into it. Nutella, chocolate covered strawberry, birthday cake, Snickers, salted caramel, chocolate banana, strawberry banana, ultimate banana. <laughs> I, 
I am okay. So these okay. You, it's it's that it's not that you add these to this. It's like you get your you know regular milkshake and then you get your special. Oh, these are the ones I went with. And I love chocolate banana. That's my thing. But I do like strawberry banana and ultimate banana. Well, that just sounds good. Turtle caramel nut, peanut butter cup, chocolate chip cookie dough, M and M's, mint cookies and cream, cookies and cream, double chocolate fudge, Butterfinger Heath very. Berry, strawberry, chocolate fudge, brownie, white chocolate, or eggnog. Yes. I think they had other ones too, but man, I'm telling you, this is the place. If you got a steak and shake somewhere near you, go. What are you waiting for? <laughs> okay, if you're trying to lose weight, uh, one day won't hurt you. But yeah, so... I mean, look, look, they got kids menu here. They got regular desserts. Look at the breakfast. Holy heck. There's like a huge menu for breakfast and stuff. Hey, you can get a Royal Straight Steak Burger. Um, or Royal Steak Burger Combo for breakfast. They don't have Royal with cheese. <laughs> but they do have the Royal Owl Steak Burger. Uh, sausage, bacon, sausage, egg, sausage, gravy, and biscuits, blueberry pancakes, cakes and eggs pancakes, breakfast skillet, uh, one egg, apples and caramel, fresh banana. Man, I love this place. I really like this place. So, there we go. So, that is uh, Steak and Shake. And... I think it's time to go to our final destination. <laughs> We've gone to a lot of destinations already. All right, we are here. Um, in case you didn't realize, the past... Uh, couple of two locations are normal so we've moved from Bloomington to normal normals north and this is the historical Norma or nor ugh, normal theater apparently it's closed from July to August <laughs> maybe they were doing re renovating but this is it here this is the um, it's the historic theater Let's move up here a little bit so you can get a good look at it. Jimmy John's right next to it. Wow, man, that's perfect. Come out, watch a movie, come over here to Jimmy John's. All right, so let's read about it here. The theater has been completely restored to its original condition when it opened in 1937. The first theater designed for sound films Today it shows classic films and holds live theater and music. And we got the official website. So here it is. Oh, so they're going to be showing Elf. Well, that's cool. And uh, let's see. You can't take it with you. Meet me in St. Louis. You see some of the movies they're showing here? Three shows only. See, this is neat. I like theaters like this, where you can see old movies and see them see them on big screens. The Bishop's Wife. Cary Grant. So, let's see. Let's click on About the Theater. Uh, find this. Facility Renner. Theater History. There we go. Here we go. Open in 1937, Norma Theater, now Twin City. Icon. Huh? Norma Theater, now Twin City Icon. For the past 20 years, the Norma Theater in Norma, Illinois, has thrived as a town-run venue for classic, independent, and foreign films. Today, the theater is a central att attraction in the revitalized uptown Norma district just east of the Illinois Illinois. Illinois State University campus. Yet, the art modern style theater goes back much farther, all the way to 1937 and the Great Depression. 
Its golden years lasted better than three decades before the aging movie house began facing its share of the tough times and indignities common to pre-World War II theaters in American downtowns. Fortunately, the normal survived neglect, disfigurement, and closure to become, after its restoration, one of the finest movie venues in the Midwest. Finishing up the theater in 1937. Look at that. And my goodness. Okay, so there's a lot of information here that you can take a look at. Um, finishing touches in the interior when they're working. This is cool. Look at that. Doors open November 1937. There it is. Golden years. Comfortably cool. Is that cool as in, like, it's cool inside, or it's cool as in awesome? I don't know. 1956. Screening Doris Day, 1954. No, that's not Doris. <laughs> and the Rebirth. Grand reopening, October 7th, 1994. Oh, wow. Look how nice that looks. Whoa! In color? My goodness, this is cool looking. Okay, guys, if you go to Bloomington, make sure you go up to Normal and go watch a movie up here. This is cool. Look at that. Look at this. Oh, man, it's colorful. This is so cool. Wow. That's neat. Now, it mentioned uh, the Central Illinois... Wait a minute. Central? Where was it? Illinois State University campus. And there is something about the campus that I remember reading. We're not going to go visit it. But... I'm going to pull this up here. Okay, this is what I was looking for here. Uh, Illinois State University, ISU. Founded in 1857, it's the oldest public university in Illinois. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff, but this I wanted to point this out. That it's the oldest one in the state of Illinois. So, that is cool. Let's just move this over here. So that way you can see the emblem for Illinois State University. So, I mean, I don't think it's like a, an attraction, you know, like you go there and uh, like some of the other places. But I just thought it was interesting historically that this is the oldest university in the state. So there we go. Bloomington Normal. I know this video was probably the longest video I've done so far. And there's a lot of sites to go see here in Bloomington. A lot more than what I would have expected. I thought Joliet had a lot. And it, I'm sure it does have a lot. But as far as uh, just research I've been doing on my own, 
and just looking for things, you know, like I said, if I was to travel to Bloomington Normal, what would I go and do? Well, this is what I found out. And uh, these are the things that I found interesting. Now, uh, since I've got a world tour and there are a lot of places to go, I can't really stay in one place for too long. Uh, maybe a few hours, with the exception of maybe a little bit of sleep here and there. Uh, when we come to our virtual world, I don't need much sleep. Maybe two, three hours. And I'm good. <laughs> anyway, guys, girls, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it uh, informative. And I hope to see you on the next leg of our journey. Our adventure around the world. Thanks. Take care. And if you had fun watching this flight, then you might enjoy watching the same flight on one of these other simulators. It's a great way to compare the difference between them, but it's also a nice way to relive some old memories or make some new ones. Thanks for watching and I'll see you around in the wild blue yonder.